But I can't breathe because Greg is blocking the fence. But we're in Boxcar Buddy. Meeting in the week in the cars. We week, week stuff and we don't know shit, but you're going to listen because we're going to be stars. Yeah. Sorry about that. I like uh, changing it up. Yeah, that was fun. How'd you like? Uh, how'd you like scatting? Over I do there? like scatting. It's just a whole lot of just making a noise and doing it to a beat. Uh, you know. All right. So now that I've flipped as well, I will tell you, it's a. Lo- I feel a lot more naked singing and doing lyrics than than beatboxing. Yeah. And I'm imagining. Does it feel the same way? Like on the other side it's, for it's you? A to- it's a totally different story because usually I can just come up with something dumb and stupid, mm-hmm. but this time around, I was just like, whew. I gotta keep a rhythm. I gotta keep the beat. Uh huh. It's timing. I'm tired. Little method. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want to sleep forever now. Oh. I well, just want to. I want to lay down in this bag eat. of feathers that I have here. We have to eat first because it's That's cold. True. It's been getting very cold here in Chicago, mm-hmm. and uh, hypothermia is real when you're homeless like we are, man. It is. And this I mean, is, this. I mean, I do love that shade of lip gloss that you have. What is that? Uh, Ode to hypothermia. Uh, this here is. Uh, it's actually. It's like the it's the skin. I believe it's some kind of blubber, like animal blubber. Ooh. I found it on the like in this area of one of the docks off Lake Michigan. I think it was maybe the Belmont Harbor or Montrose or something. It's very fetching, though. I have to say. Thank you, thank you very much. Can I can I note lush, lush lips? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it definitely it it's plump. You know, like there's there's blubber in there, so it's it's almost like I'm injecting fat into my lips. Mm-hmm. But they just stay on the outside. They 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 maintain the shape. And it's, uh, I'm glad to hear that it's that it's fetching. Thank you for that. Uh, so anyway, thank you. Welcome again. Uh, Greg and I are here in the boxcar. Um, Greg, congratulations on procuring your boxcar and yes. that sweet feather mattress you got in there. Yes, indeed. I, I found this from an old chicken factory. Oh. Uh, it is uh, what they call the Cluckmobile. Okay. And it's just a, it's a big, giant chicken with wheels. Nice. Imagine like the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. But way less fun and creative. It's just a big chicken with wheels. I don't know. I mean, maybe less creative, but it seems kind of fun, right? Like I mean, a, a it giant smells chicken? good in here. Yeah, it certainly does. Like, um, as much as I like hot dogs, I don't think I could handle the smell of hot dog forever. No, no. But with chicken, like, you can just you can just hang out with chicken all, all day. day. All day. All day. All day. Because, like, you can, you can fry it. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can steak fry it. Mm-hmm. You can grill it. You can fry it. There's so many different uh, ways to cook chicken. I had some chicken and waffle bites uh, this morning. Powdered sugar, some little, uh, some some like maple butter sauce on them. Stop or it! Like that. I haven't eaten in three days. I know. So I'm sorry. I, you're, I, ma- I, you're making me rumble. I, well, I'm just. There's only so, there's only so many feathers I can munch down on before I'm like I could really use some like real food. Some real food. That's well. That's what reminded me of it. I'm seeing your feather bed, and I'm I'm smelling it in this box. <coughs> Oof. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Boy, you. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Your, your cough sounds like a chicken now. What? How no. long have you had this feather mattress? About uh, three days. You got to take a break from that, I think. You need to maybe spend some time. Nah, I just need a, I need just... a little drink, a little sippy sip of this water. Oh, yeah? Just a little sippy sap, and uh, I'll be... <coughs> this is just a brand new cough. I've just never heard that no, it's cough just, from you it's before. Just, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. I'm fine. Okay. Well, anyway, if you're ever behind the uh, f- Fat Poor Tap Works, it's at uh, Damon and Division. Mm-hmm. If you're ever uh, behind there, uh, they tossed out some uneaten, untouched oh. chicken and waffle bites today. It, like made to perfection, just yeah. like ugh, these, I happen these to stupid, be. These stupid rich people don't want this. I happen to be in the dumpster when they just kind of opened the lid and tossed them in, so they didn't even touch any of the other stuff. They almost <sighs> fell like in the dish right into my hand one or two of them fell out into my mouth which Man. was because i just sit there with my mouth open wait you know once i hear that dumpster lid open i just open my mouth up and i hope that something comes something good comes wow. in wow I, I don't think i've actually had a clean meal since i ate with my dad in his rv uh-huh it's been a while yeah it's been a really long while have you talked to your dad recently no no he's Sad. still 
I still haven't finished the Blood Oath. Got to keep so. in touch. Yeah, I, okay. Well, I guess you do have to... You don't want to go there without having finished your assignments. Yeah, you know, but I mean, like, I've kind of I've kind of let Gollum go just because, like, I want him to leave me alone, yeah. to be fair. I mean, like, I, he's legless, you know? He doesn't... He's, he's legless, but he's also, like, he, he's been following me a lot. Really? Yeah, he, he's been questioning me about the, the process of repairing robot... As well as wanting those pine cones that he's, I made. He's still obsessed with Robot, huh? He fell in love hard, so it's just sad. It's all very sad. It really is, and I wish Robot would stop texting him. Oh, Robot's been uh, ever since I installed that alive. stupid and ever Chat. since I chatterbaiting, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, ever since I installed chatterbait and uh, Wi-Fi. Robots just, Robot just send goes crazy. Them out. Yeah, Robot is just. I mean, I've we've gotten emails from like Comcast, Ooh. and I'm like, how how can I have a Comcast bill? I mean, we're I'm homeless. There's nowhere to put a router. <laughs> right. Like I can't even build a router on your. You like, I'd have to get rid of the sex parts. It's yeah. the whole reason you exist. Exactly. But sure enough, they they contacted me and they said that uh, uh I got my first strike. On the you know the three strikes of of things that you can't do on Comcast. Comcast that you, has a three strike rule. It has a three strike rule if you illegally download shit. Oh, okay. and it said that I uh, illegally downloaded something called uh, Big Busty Milfs. Hmm, that doesn't like, sound like you. No, I'm I'm a streaming man. Yeah, I don't, I don't you don't download. download. No, I why? stream. Why would you? I don't want a paper trail. Exactly. There's nothing worse than that. And where are you going to keep it anyway? We don't have external hard drives in here. Mm-hmm. We don't have anything that's robot. Keep, keep robot only stuff. has about three gigs of space. It's, the rest is memory, right? The rest of it is sex stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and he learns. He learns to get better at sex stuff, which takes up space, which is why he can't store. I stuff mean, in that's there. that's his AI programming. It's totally I mean, it makes he, perfect he sense. He learns. That's the magic of him. He learns. Absolutely, he gets better. Well, so uh, all right. Well, that's um, that's all frightening. Um, it's horrifying. Well, I, I, I'm guessing that's why you fortified this particular boxcar a little bit better uh, this week. It's all metal, uh, and I noticed a lot of gates and some junk set up as like a fortress kind of a thing outside. It's really yeah. hard to get in here. A lot of barbed wire. Yeah, it, the only way to get in is with our secret knock. Yeah. So thankfully, you know. I Thankfully, I remembered that. Yeah. Was as soon as I walked in and I saw you, like, looking up from that feather mattress with the remote pointed at me, I was like, man. I mean, I, this is, uh, he's been I following me. Barely avoided it, man. Plus the Tims. They've been around. Oh, boy. We've just made a lot of Don, enemies, Don, like, am I, am I a target? You do tend to piss people off. And you don't really finish the job once the fight has started. You kind of leave loose ends around. But I get bored with it. I understand. I understand that. I mean, like, you can only hate someone for so long before you're like, can I do anything else? I know, especially when you're starving every day. It's like you I mean, focus on food more. I mean, to think of my list of enemies, I've got I've got Gollum. I've mm. got uh, Dad. But, you know, I just need to... Fill up that life debt, and I'll be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robot's been pretty pissed at me lately. That family in Evanston does not like me around. Uh, well, you did squat, and you left some corpses in their basement. How long did you squat there? Two weeks? It was like two months. Oh, my God. <laughs> they were on vacation. What were they going to do with the house? Oh, goodness. They had all this heating and electricity that they already paid for. Like, it's why let it go to waste? It's almost, it would have been a shame if you Just, hadn't like, used th- th- If they thought... Of things in my shoes, like here's here's a guy who wears three beat to shit jackets and probably seven or eight scarves just tied around parts of my body uh-huh. to cover up any exposure. Yeah, I have no food. I have no water. I got I got no place to cook a hot meal. Right. I got no places to store a cold meal. Where did you, uh, I was just wondering, this cup of water you've got right now, where'd you, where'd you get that? Oh, uh, I got it from the dispensary in the back. Uh, it's next to the feather bags. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah, you got some, got some stuff over here. Yeah, man. <laughs> Feel free. Feel free to. Thank you. Oh, you got some corn. This isn't, this isn't popcorn. This is like regular corn in cans. You got a lot of creamed corn back here. What? Yeah. You got like 16 cans of creamed corn. Uh, where do those come from? 
That's a good question. Actually, I didn't... actually, you see this like this like yogurt. You see this like yogurt machine over here? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the lever. Do it. Whoa! Yeah. What is that? It's creamed corn. It's coming through the uh, it's coming through the uh, dispenser there, the the yogurt dispenser. So you're supposed to hold something underneath it. Look, give me that bowl. Give me that bowl. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. You just. Ooh. Yeah. And you just. Oh my God. There you go. Some creamed corn. That so, thing's... Eh, it'll stop it. Okay. So you're you're saying that for the last three days I've been eating chicken feathers when this car had, he had... access to. This looks like, yeah, this must cream have been corn. like a formerly like an ice cream truck at some point. This is a whole, got that switch right there. It's like a little frosty smoothie thingy. Swirls. Swirls creamed corn in your bowl, yeah. You better eat that. You're looking pretty, uh, you look like you might be faint. You look like you might be falling out of that chair. You ever look at uh, a bowl of creamed corn for so long, you see your own reflection and how much of a dumb, big fucking idiot you are? Because that's the state I'm in right now. Not lately, no. Yeah, you need. Yeah, you need something in your stomach. Definitely, <laughs> just go ahead and eat that. Eat that bowl. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're we're meeting here again in this box car like we do every week because we wanted to talk about some of the content that Greg or I uh, managed to absorb over the uh, the week prior. And uh, I'll go ahead and kick it off this week, Greg. Yeah. I um, you know, I don't like to strike a negative tone right off the bat, but I will say that I was taken to a, a movie i was taken uh -huh. to a theater mm -hmm. and uh, to watch a, a premiere of this of this uh, another hero movie justice league oh yeah uh, uh oh dc's answer to uh, the avengers uh all that little franchise there and i will i will tell you you know it was, I, w I was taken under under protest but you know a couple of friends of mine um came across a wallet and there was like this regal city card like a membership thing in there so they've been going to movies left and right and um uh, somebody set up like a group event where there were going to be a bunch of people you know like homeless people like us in uh, in the middle of the theater during the premiere of justice league and uh, every, it was kind of like a potluck people were bringing like you know like a everyone had buffet. their own shoes to yeah. drink soup out of absolutely we all had just different you know somebody brought like napkins with like some smeared like potatoes on them for Ooh. people to share it was man that sounds tasty yeah so but anyway people kind of had obligations to be there and then somebody couldn't make it last minute they had uh you know they had like a, a, a bout of of diabetes or something you know something happened with their uh -huh. leg and uh and so they couldn't make it but they needed someone to occupy the chair and that's where i came in i replaced this guy uh and i brought um cherry stems Ooh, i brought uh, i brought about chewy yeah i brought 30 or 40 cherry stems and um so we were watching it and and i went in not really expecting much i did i was not expecting even the level of avengers in terms of comedy and and plot details and 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 fun action and all that stuff and it still managed to let me down i had no expectations <laughs> and it still let me down it i i have to tell you man it was, i thought you were gonna go for the twist like now greg i have to say that this film is okay it's like no it's still no it's still let me it still let me down it, it's just <laughs> th there was no there was no chemistry between any of the heroes there were a lot of knowing looks from wonder woman like right sort of well, at yeah the camera. i mean you you saw wonder woman right i actually i have not and i do want to watch that i think it's okay like as a film like for kids it's great like, I think, like, little boys and little girls watching it, they're like, this is fucking cool. Yeah. And it's silly. And it's got, like, it's got a right tone. Um, I just thought it was fucking stupid and the villain is, is horrible. Yeah. Um, but it's good. Like, it's a good movie. So I was expecting, like... For them to put a little bit more effort into Justice League. Well, I and from what I, I did see, Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Right, that's the only other DC movie besides Wonder Woman that came out before this. Right, before Justice League. Man of Steel. Oh right, right, of course. Okay. Yeah, but that movie's a massive fucking miserable piece of yeah, shit. Yeah. So all everything we the just take away from that is Zod. Everything we just it's, listed. Was I think that like might be the only good. movie I've ever watched where I rooted for the villain. I was like, yeah, Zod's right. Fuck this place. Yeah, yeah. He Fuck was, the Earth. Yeah, it's interesting. put your big robot dildos all over our planet and. 
fuck it to death, like straight to the core. <laughs> Good. Blow us Good up. Good for you. Get rid of us. I like your idea. And that's what like terraforming. That's why I like parts of Batman versus Superman cuz like Batman sees Superman like fucking around like at the end of Man of Steel cuz Batman versus Superman starts with like Batman looking up and seeing Zod and Superman fighting each other. Uh-huh. And that's just like the perfect like middle finger to Batman to be like, "Okay, yeah. this is a good setup." Oh, Batman murdered a guy. Uh, this isn't... Uh, uh, no, uh, no. So, uh, yeah, all right. So Justice League, you know, you go in there. The, the movie starts, and it's in a world where, like, Superman has died. You know, like, Superman's... Uh, gonna be spoiler some, gonna alert! Be, gonna be some spoilers here. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Because, I, because I'm I mean, advocating... That's how, that's how that movie fucking ended. It I'm, was terrible. I'm advocating that nobody should see this movie. That's why I'm saying it. So there will be spoilers, <laughs> because I don't think that anyone should waste time or money going to see this. Uh, so the movie starts out, Superman is dead, um, and and basically, you know, everyone else is trying to go through the wheel, you know, Batman and, and Commissioner Gordon and Lois Lane, Superman's mom, Martha Kent, they're all trying to get on with their lives, you know, without Clark, and, and the world is trying to get on without Superman, and you can tell, they, they make it clear that crime has gone up and all this and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. So the one of you know then when the group gets together, Batman sort of recruits. He he goes and talks to Wonder Woman, and then they both agree she go she's going to go after Cyborg, and and Batman's going to go after the Flash, and they're going to recruit them, and then somehow Aquaman will get into it, and then the basically the whole plan. And they get this big old sex orgy going on. Mm, super super super, super orgy. orgy. Do you think that when Superman ejaculates, it has the force of a bullet? It did in Hancock. Remember that? <laughs> Did yeah, blue holes in the roof of his trailer. Man, like I think that movie's a little underrated. I think that's I think it's a funny movie. I like taking Han- a, I like taking Hancock. like the piss out of super. Yeah, super it was heroes. it was funny. Plus, I mean, Charlize Theron, super hot, oh. super hot. Oh, it's like the like crazy superhero lady at the end of the movie yeah. where she's just like oh. fighting him. Yeah, it's I awesome. I love her. I love everything she's in. So for the most part, so they're they're you know they they go about their things and and it's just the middle of the movie. Batman, his big plan was that he wanted to raise Superman from the dead. That was his thing. He I mean, needed like, to get everyone together to get Superman back and therefore fight Steppenwolf, who was, you know, who's prepping the Earth for... Wait, Step? that's the name of the villain? Steppenwolf. I thought, like, I've I've heard talkings on the street. Like, I've been following people just to get their opinion of, of Justice League. <laughs> yeah. Um, and And, like, I heard the Steppenwolf thing and I was like... I guess they're just making a joke because, you know, Steppenwolf, Steppenwolf Theater. Theater here in, here Chicago. in Chicago. Oh, are they showing Justice League at Steppenwolf I'm Theater? I'm like, wow, Is that why? You, know, you know, I've seen the Blue Man group from, from, the, from the balcony. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> right, right, I, right. I hung out with the Phantom at the Opera there. <laughs> exactly. Um, but from what they said, like, they kept saying Steppenwolf, but that's the name of the that's fucking the name of villain. The villain. That's the name of the villain. He's like, was uh, I think he's like Dark Sides um, uh, number two. Steppenwolf prepares worlds for Dark. He prepares planets for Dark Side to come oh, eat them or whatever. Yeah, because I know they wanted to do. They want to get Dark Side into it real bad. Yeah. So Steppenwolf is like the precursor to him, and he even mentions the name. I think Dark Side over the course of the movie, but. The co- one the, of the cooler... Does he do it in like a like a Sith voice, like Dex? No, no. And one of the things I noticed is that he sounds almost identical to Ultron in Avengers. What's with this thing with superhero movies where they're getting British guys with like this horse style to be all the villain? You know what I mean? It was. You know all, why? It was because just... it makes him sound yes. smart and elegant. I need to. Do... Why does everyone keep saying that to me? Why doesn't humanity just kill itself? I think I would be better. Why? Why is there a Burger King and a Wendy's on this street corner, dressed like a bat? This is the chaos of humanity. (laughs) It's called freedom of choice, man. This drink from Starbucks, I see. So brightly colored. It's so brightly colored, and they call it Uricorn (laughs) Yarin. Yes, Steppenwolf, you got it. He said it correctly. It's the actual... Yes, you're a Kron Yara. Do you want that in Venti or... What is a Venti? That's uh, the size of drink. You, have, you want a bucket? You want like a middle bucket? I want, a smaller one? I want your soul in this bucket. Oh my gosh. And then, well, they, and then he sick. zaps him to death. With his yeah. big iron penis-like fingers. 
I don't know who the fuck this is, and I hate it. I hate him already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's pretty much you. You you didn't paint an inaccurate picture of Steppenwolf as he was. Does he just keep yelling at Batman? What is a venti? No, he jumps. He keeps jumping around and swinging his axe at things and being completely like. He's be- he he's he fails at like every attack that he does. He never ends up hitting like any of the superheroes. It's. All right, here's here's a true question. Who's more charismatic, Ultron or Steppenwolf? Well, I thought Ultron was. Who do you think has the bigger dongle? Because, I mean, they're they're robots, aren't they? Steppenwolf is not. He's like an alien creature. Oh, then boo. So he definitely has the bigger dongle. Oh, of course. Well, no, you never know. Robot. Unless, unless, um, unless, uh... Ultron's been upgraded to the iPhone X. He's probably got a dongle. He could be. And that's the beauty of Ultron is you can always swap out the part. You can always upgrade it, you know, and then when a better one comes along, you can change it. Oh, you it. mean like the movies? Like there's if there's yeah. a better superhero movie you should go to? Swap it in. Man, it's it sucks that Justice League is out at the same time as Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Well, let me let me just before we move on to that, yeah, let yeah, me yeah, just yeah. Let, finish with Justice League. I there was there was really no chemistry between the heroes. The all the cool parts of the movie, the action in terms of the fighting, you saw them all in the trailers. The fighting did Ugh. not go beyond that. The only <laughs> slightly cool part I will I said that I in my head thought was cool is that when Superman is raised from the dead, he ends up fighting all the other soup the, they fight he fights all the justice league members because he doesn't remember who he is and he that has actually like a sounds brief, cool like it, 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 it the is threat of superman yeah and he was Ugh. he was going nuts you know it's it was really it was kind of cool in the, and that's in the middle of the movie but that is the only saving grace of this entire thing the rest Damn. of it dude the end of it i mean just like with Avengers, the cool part of seeing those movies is watching the heroes work in tandem like work as a team you know yeah. you got the flash uh, po- poking Wonder Woman's sword back at her while he's like running across a roof or whatever, or or Cyborg throwing Aquaman like at like a different you know at a, at a different villain in the sky. Can we clear things up for the fans? Um, Does Cyborg shout "Booyah"? I don't recall. Damn it! I don't think he did. If if Cyborg doesn't say "Booyah" at least once, it's not Cyborg. He might, he might have. It's, I honestly don't it's remember. It's just a man in a CGI machine body. Yeah. Yes. And it was just, there was, they twice, they, what do you, th- all right, and the end of the movie really kind of sealed this for me, right? What's the cheesiest way you could think to end like a Justice League movie like this? The campiest, most uh, predictable. They're all at like City Hall and they all each get like a medal or something. <laughs> no, and then quite. and then uh, Aquaman like looks at all of them while they're standing in a line and just goes, so is this it? Are we some kind of Justice League? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we some kind That's of pretty suicide che- squad? That, that is pretty cheesy. But no, it wasn't quite that. It was Superman. Batman gives Superman Ooh. a massive beach. <laughs> Not quite that either. Does the Flash vibrate so hard that he causes the film franchise to end (laughs) so we don't have to have any more movies? If only. If only. But no. None of that is the way that it is. Superman and the Flash meet in the middle of like a country road. They like high five and they shake hands and it's after everything is over and they race. They race, except... That sounds great! Yeah, except that it's not. Like they don't show you... A result of it. It's just the two of them high fiving and basically talking about the race between the Flash and Superman. Oh, I'm kind of curious myself. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, no problem. So, which way we want to go? You want to go east? Which coast do you want to hit? Well, I've never seen the Pacific. Okay, let's go there. And then they start running, and then then the thing ends. Like that's the after credits. That's the first one, and it's just so. It should be cool. I know what you're saying. As I'm describing it to you right now, and as I'm speaking this stuff out loud, it sounds like it would be it cool. Sound, like that sounds but it is fun. Not. But it is not. Ah, uh, that like that fits in tone with more of what I know of DC. Like the way that it, like, because my my knowledge and history with DC has never really been with the comics because I was never big into reading comics. Uh-huh. It was the the. Uh, Bruce Cart- Tim animated, animated series. Yeah, it was ex- exactly. Justice League and Batman animated. And that was like the perfect tone of like, it has really deep, serious character moments. But it remembers it's a, it's a goofy comedy, like action cartoon. Yeah. And that sounds like something that like the Flash and Superman would do. Just like a friendly bet. It'd just be like, 
hey, let's give it, let's do a race. The fastest man alive versus the man of steel. Let's see. So maybe for me, maybe what, maybe at that point the movie was just ruined and I was waiting for it to be over. I did, this was like a midnight showing. So I'll fully admit, like I was not in the best. I just wasn't in, I didn't go in there with like the best, like, you know, I just imagine the guys with the orange cones on the light, on the, the flashlights just poking at you like, get out of here. What are y'all doing in here? You You smell, you all smell. You smell like a cat's armpit. All right, so maybe all right, but but I'm just telling you, it's it, everything that they try to do. Like you said, from a writing standpoint, you hear these things, and like there's there were moments in there that I was like, man, like this this should be very cool, you know. I, I there were a lot of slow motion shots of Jason Momoa, the guy playing Aquaman, and yeah, and you just see those good looking dude, like those fucking good looking dude pointed nipples, and he's just like, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Stick that close up, me. close up shirtless stuff. But like the watching the water bad. drip off the tip of the nip. Yes, just like that. Slow motion. He's like chugging a whiskey bottle, and then the water comes up, and he <laughs> swims. <laughs> And it's the, but the fights are bad. And then there's a lot of like Wonder Woman jumps down and you catch the tiniest bit of like her underbutt because she like squats when she like, you know, jumps yeah, down. That, I mean, and it's if like, you okay, haven't, like, if you haven't seen Wonder Woman itself, that's what that whole movie essentially underbutt, is. Underbutt, right? And then you hear her awful theme song. Oh, yeah, that, I did hear that in the trailer. Yeah, I heard a lot of that. I, like, I enjoyed, Shut I, en- up. I, en- we know you're coming. Just saw that at, at that because it was like the beginning of World War Two in that movie. It's just like, please stop playing your terrible music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beginning of World War Two, and the the theme is like this electric guitar, like yeah. this loud noise. What which is that noise? It doesn't. That fit. does not sound like a sousaphone. <laughs> What is that horrible sound? I don't recognize any things that's coming into my ears right now. It sounds like a French horn being shoved with a bunch of Dusseldorfels. (laughs) Every time I hear that fucking theme, I I hate it more and more. Because I remember when it played in Batman vs. Superman during that awful fucking finale (laughs) of them trying to prove... Guys, Superman's not a murderer. There's no one on this. There's no one on this island. It's it's evacuated. It's empty. It's no all one good. Will die. It's all good. No cost of human life. No one's life. gonna die. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Like, and then you hear that, and I'm just like, I want to, I want to die. So I remember like leaning back more and more in my seat, like sinking down, just like, I, this is this is your brain on on. DC movie franchise. Exactly, exactly. And then the, the the very end, super spoiler here, after the credits scene, all right? Uh, you get your it's it's a shot behind somebody on a on a little speedboat speeding out to the middle of the ocean. You see the tops of like the handles of two katanas. You see a cow with a wedding veil. <laughs> no, don't see anything like that. It's just Damn it. He, he's on there. You get the sense it's like an assassin that you're watching. He goes out into the middle of the ocean. His speedboat pulls up to a bigger yacht uh-huh. and it gets up. He hops off. And you see, as you as he walks up these stairs, you see that it's Deathstroke. You see that it's oh, uh, Slade, okay. right? Yeah. Slade Wilson. And he goes up, he takes his mask off, and he's all like, yeah, you know, what are we doing here? Hey, hey, hey guys. Yeah, what, 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 who am I killing? <laughs> and, 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 then on the ca- <laughs> and then on the couch, on the couch is, fuck, you just see the bald head and the annoying voice of Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, and you know it's Lex Luthor. Oh, no. And the two of them are talking, and they don't say very much, just like all these teaser scenes after credits. Nobody says a lot. It's all subtext and, like, meaningful looks and intrigue, right? And pauses. But anyway, Lex Luthor explains to Deathstroke, Hey, uh, Super Superman and the Super Friends have made a team. Maybe we should make... A league of our own. Oh, and that's but but all right. And obviously, yeah, like, there's part of me that's like, okay, of course, like the the evil villains league. That yes. sounds hilarious yes. and great to it, bring that in. It does, it does, and I completely agree. Here's my problem: Google League of Doom, and you know what you get? Legion of Doom. Any fans of the DC Universe know that the the opposite of the Justice League is the Legion of Doom. Yeah. There is no League of Doom. They fucked up the line. It's he goes. We should start a league of our own, but it's a legion of doom. Like maybe, he totally maybe, fucked up maybe the that's dialogue. What uh, oh man, he should have just been like, maybe we'll make a league, a league of our own, and then it cuts Death back to Slade. Deathstroke. Just hey, you no. mean legion, right, no. boss? <laughs> Hey, I got an idea. How about we make ourselves a, a group of super baddies? We call ourselves 
the group of super baddies. What's a synonym for league? What are we What are we doing here? It was. It, it was. What's, it was the, a tiny what's the name of that thing? Fox TV show that we may or may not have a copyright strike to get our hands on? <laughs> Legion. That would be. That might be it. Right. Right. So it, it was just. It, I know it's a tiny little thing. You know what? I, it's like something so stupid. Obviously, the point of the scene is to tease the Legion of Doom movie. Like, yeah. yes, I agree that that's a very good hook. Who that's would play Chitara? Nice. I think it would be Olivia Munn. Is that is Chitara? Is that not uh, Thundercats? No, I think that's what... Isn't that the name of... Meanwhile, in the Hall of Justice... Dan and No, I think it was Cheetara. I think that's what her name is. She's just a, a cheetah woman. Oh, that's fine. Um, you know what? You know what they're missing from the Justice League? The Native American guy who gets really big and really small. Oh, Chuck! <laughs> Dude, that guy's great. They're not gonna put him in. Why? There's no way. They there's need to. there's no way they would ever put him to in in a twenty. I his little dust. They would never put him in into a 2017 Justice League. If the super Justice super racist. Oh bro. man, what part of it is super racist? <laughs> is it his fucking name? Is it his costume where he's just an a Indian? guy <laughs> it's Face, not even a superhero the- costume it's like every stereotypical like native american like yeah. costume yeah and it's, it's his lines it's something are that like- you see the white preppy kid dress up as at like sophomore year right. of college or in the thanksgiving play in like the suburb elementary school yeah you know yeah, yeah. It's, it's i represent the indians have some of our turkey, white man. <laughs> and, and at that po- and then you see, then you see Batman pull out his bat knife and repeatedly stab him. This is for America. <laughs> this is for justice. We're taking the cranberries back. I'm giving this back to the people who deserve it. All right. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Justice League. I thought it was just you Mess. want you want it to be cool there are things like if i was looking at the script i would be very excited reading the scenes that should have been but there's no chemistry the the ezra miller as the flash did decent he was he was funny you yeah. could tell that it was like you know, like you know him his thing his interactions with cyborg like there were things about that that were redeemable but Overall, the movie as a whole was kind of a, a big waste of time. And as I, I said, I think I'm all- glad that I that I backed out because I know I know you uh, you sent me by pigeon courier. Yes, yes. Like, I invited Greg, you. Heck, hoth, dost thou wisheth to join us? It took me a few pigeons. It actually, took, it took it took him about six pigeons because he wrote he wrote an essay. Yeah, I know. It was like dumb. double. It was, it was double spaced and part. it was in Comic Sans. Well, I like, wanted to make sure you could read it. Uh, but I, I was immediately like, no, I'm done giving DC money. Yeah, totally fair. But you, as you mentioned before, Thor Ragnarok, yeah, which you so and I the, did We did together. go see this. So we, yeah. we managed to sneak in during, uh, uh, one of the opening nights for Thor Ragnarok. And that is, it, it was just a dumb, fun comic book movie. Definitely. Like it, it was the perfect, like, we turn, don't turn give, your brain off. Yeah, we don't give a shit. Like you're, you're not gonna get something deep from us. We're just gonna have fun, mm-hmm. and it was fun. It, it was, was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought about it more and more after we saw, it, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, that was actually really good. Um, I still like Guardians a little bit more, and it's a shame that it came out the same year. But I think everyone's general consensus now is like, oh, I like Thor more than Guardians too. Thor was a lot of fun. They um. I, I loved the I loved the cameos early on yeah. of like a Matt Damon in the play. Matt Damon as in the play. Oh my god! And, and uh, um, Sa- oh, what's his name? Sam Neill, the guy who played uh, you know from Jurassic Park yeah. and who played Merlin in the TV sh- uh, the TV special movie. Who was playing of Sword Thor- in the Stone? Yeah, he was playing uh, Odin. Loki. Yeah, uh, in the in the play. Yeah, that was. <laughs> and then uh, and then there was one more. It was someone I, I didn't see him. Did you see this though? Uh, someone said that. Um, Chris Hemsworth's brother, Liam Hemsworth, was in the movie somewhere. I wasn't looking. Like the only, uh, I don't even know what Chris, Chris Hemsworth's brother fucking looks like. So <laughs> he's the he dude mu- from Hunger Games. He's the. Uh... Oh, you're barking it. up the wrong tree on <laughs> that it. one. Forget I brought it up. I remember being forced to go see the first Hunger Games movie. And you were and... like, "This is my life. I'm living the Hunger Games, <laughs> <laughs> idiot." Thanks for I, bringing me here. I am starving for good this content right life. now. This is my life. I am hungry for a good movie, and this is not bringing it. And I was starving when you found me in the yard outside and asked me to come see this movie with you. It was, it was you very shortly after I became homeless when I saw that movie. And yeah. Oh, boy. This not is a, battle, a lot of bad memories. Telling. But 
uh, to go to go off into Thor Ragnarok. So uh, the general story is Thor and Loki uh, find out that Odin is going to die, and he dies. And then Kate Blanchett comes out looking like Aku from Samurai Jack and says, "Ha ha, lol! I'm gonna kill everyone on Asgard in a nice hot way." Yeah, and then he, he she uh, she kicks them off the the uh, Edris Alba train into a oh, garbage yeah. planet. Yeah, that's right. Uh, when when Doctor Bones put the sword into the into the eye, mm-hmm. you know the man with two guns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is, uh, I, I hate him the more I think about him. <laughs> Everything about him, I hate him. I'm Ooh, like, wait, which guy? Uh, the the guy who played uh, the new Judge Dredd and he played Bones in the uh, the new Star Trek trilogy. He was uh, he was. Oh the, yes, yes. Uh, also, he was also from Lord of the Rings. The um, one of the commanders there. Yeah, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, the guy who played Bones. I, in I don't Star even Trek remember Wars, him yeah. in, in Lord of the Rings. But he was like, um, oh damn it! I feel terrible making this reference with it, but it's like. Um, not Isengard, but he was like the, the king who was taken over by Wormtongue, who was, you know, he was like speaking in his ear and all that. He was that king's son. He's the, the, the Rohirrim, the Rohan, Rohan is the name of the city in Lord of the Rings. He was the leader of the Rohirrim, the knights, the knights of Rohan. I don't even remember it. Cause to be fair, I don't think I've actually watched the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy in probably over a decade. My God, man. You know, I know. They're making a Lord of the Rings series with Amazon. Oh, please, no. $250 million. Uh, it's the most I just, expensive I just, series ever made. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to think about it because I didn't like the Hobbit movies. I didn't really like those either. I love the Hobbit book. but I, I love I the book. I it's like just that, movies. you know, it should be one movie. Well, the, they, they stretched it out. Peter, uh, the crew because they, and, because and the, the, the studio wanted to make wanted, more. The, the studio heads wanted, like... If they made that movie two movies, I think it would have been fine. But yeah, three, I know they st- they stretched it. They stretched it a lot, and every I think everybody could feel it. You could just you're like, this is not speaking. Speaking of stretching, uh, how much did you hate when uh, they're doing all the fun stuff on the garbage planet, only to go back to Asgard to be really fucking boring? <laughs> oh, in Thor Ragnarok, yeah, it was very boring. Everything fun was happening on the garbage planet. It was like the Colosseum thing, where where Hulk was the I leader wanted of the, like the, the whole, ring. Yeah, I wanted the whole movie to be focused on the Colosseum because that, I know that in like that it premise, been. that premise of Hulk. Being the champion of battle, this fucking coliseum is amazing. Royale, a galactic coliseum where yeah. all these opponents are coming from all around the galaxies, and Hulk is just pounding everybody. Yeah, he's the he's the king of the coliseum. Not that I didn't, but they did, they well, they only showed like two fights. Yeah, like not that I didn't love like Kate Blanchett. I think she does a great job hamming it up because oh, yeah, she's, everyone she's in this great. movie is super hammy. Yeah, and I think yeah. That's, but I they think all that's had what sells you it. Could, you could tell that they had fun doing it, and yeah. they were still believable. That's the yeah, other part yeah. of it is that it's nobody still very believable. No one broke character, you know. It's like, and that's that's crucial. Yeah, um, and I just I really wish it stayed on the garbage planet. It yeah. should have just stayed there the whole time. Jeff Goldblum was hilarious. I remember like when he did when he pulled out the melting stick for the first time. The both of us were. Like laughing uncontrollably. It was very funny. He was I, I he was the only cameo I was expecting because I had read about him and and references. But he's a, to no, he's a full movie. blown character. He is. He is not. Not even just like they they could bring him. I think they said he's brothers of somebody in Guardians of the Galaxy. His character is. Uh, I don't remember. Like, I just wish there was more of him. There, I think there. I think their plan is that he he will be. He's gonna see. Be in another uh, here's movie. here's the thing. Like, I I was expecting him to. Uh, was fucking beat what you just drop was that a nut N- no i was just some corn oh okay yeah sorry there was that's okay yeah it's no, no, very, no, it's, it's very I'm, thick corn that's okay I'm, I'm not i'm not hungry i want you to have as much of this cream corn as you can you already look a little I, bit more flush uh, in your cheeks. Our, oh i stopped eating it already yeah you but you look better you look you look like you have energy There's, yeah <laughs> you, <laughs> still doing that huh <laughs> oh oh jeez. ew it's coated in creamed corn. It's a feather. It's a feather just slick with creamed corn juices. Uh, it, it's filling, okay? Cover, it's filling. Just cover your mouth. It's, it's filling. It's disgusting. Like, they're there. What What else am I going to supposed to do with, like, 400 pounds of, of chicken feathers? You don't, have to, you don't have to eat. They're supposed to keep you warm. Just wrap yourself in them. <sighs> they smell like chicken. Uh, What's the, why is this bad? Uh, uh, I right. mean, like, uh, right. I like the smell of chicken, but I don't like it on me. 
it's a food scent, not like a soap scent. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to bathe in it. I'd it's like, like to that, eat it, and that's why I can't. I can't help it. I mean, it's, it's like that chair, Axe so. body gel that's like chocolate scented. Have you seen that stuff? <laughs> yes, I have. I have never. Has been anyone? Into has anyone that? tried? Like, I feel like dumb high schooler kids probably take that Just Axe. Chug it. They spray it in their mouth like fucking Mad Max. Mm. What a glorious day! <laughs> what a lovely day! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mediocre. Pro- probably they probably do that, but but I'm not into that either. I don't. I would never use that stuff, and I don't want to because I don't. I agree with you. There are different scents, and food scents are not really appealing as like a body scent. Yeah, that's that's really nasty. Like anytime I've seen like because I've seen like apple scented like face creams and whatever i'm like why would you want that on your body even if i love apple pie if some chick shows up smelling like perfume apple pie i'm not i'm not gonna be into that it's not gonna be wowed i'm gonna be like okay cool cool down with the cinnamon i don't actually right i don't actually want any apple pie now i see that you made one (laughs) and that might actually be why you smell like that but i don't want it now it smells like your body. I don't like it. It's my problem. It's my issue. Yeah. But uh, you just you just need to succumb to cannibalism like I have. I mean, it's it's real easy. I know you always say that and you do you make it look good. I just I don't know. There's something about survival that. of the fittest, dude. You just you got to get what you get your hands on. I know, but I'm I I dumpster dive. I got some dope ass chicken and waffle bites this morning just right into my mouth in the dumpster. And I mean, here what I am with with cream corn and feathers. You didn't even know you had the cream corn before I came over here. You got a whole machine. You still got you got a wall of cans back there. You could be good in here I for was weeks. paying attention to the feathers and being warm for Christ's sake. Just saying. You're all good. You don't have to. You're not going to have to eat any humans for at least three weeks if you ration this stuff right. Mm, I give it three days. I'm a very hungry boy. <laughs> no I'm just wondering how. That, I'm just wondering how I'm all going to digest this. I'm, I'm a little afraid. I feel like I'm like every time I press down on my stomach, I'm just going to be like a pillow with like a loose hole. Some corn is going to leak out of you it's somewhere. Just, feathers are just going to fly out of me every single time you smack me. Oh, feathers. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, like I'm, I'm, I fluff my belly a little bit and just the feathers just fly out somewhere. I'm like, where did that come from? What orifice? What the heck? Yeah, I know. Where I just, is this? They are littering the bottom of this car forever. But all right. So Thor Ragnarok was fun. A lot of good. It's just, I'm glad you brought that up because like it's, it was just two very different experiences where Thor was turn your brain off and it was fun and yeah. it was dumb and you didn't need any like deep stuff or whatever, but it still conveyed a fun attitude and it left us feeling good at the end of that movie. Yeah. Plus I love the fact that the soundtrack wasn't like the same generic, like orchestral fucking right oh uh, yay hooray the superhero movie or going for the guardians thing where it's a soundtrack right actual of, like, songs like actual songs On i like the, the fact that like because um who the fuck did the the composition i believe it was um who was it i think he's uh the guy from devo or the talking heads i can't remember oh, exactly yeah? who yeah, he's he's actually a, a musician in in a, an electric band, and I just can't remember it off the top of my head. That's all right. Sorry, I don't have computer things on me. I live in a chicken car. Yeah, I know that's okay. Well, we I mean we are going to get a computer one day, and we can start. Pr- we can actually look up these references, and we'll try and we'll try and be better. Okay, mm-hmm. we'll try and yeah. be better. I mean, but I just wanted to say that the difference between Thor Ragnarok and Justice League is that Thor left you feeling good for turning your brain off and having that dumb fun. Justice League, it was like they went for those dumb fun things, yet then they would flip and try and be and deep. And be deep and, and they dark tr- and moody. So and- the combination of those two left you feel le- left a lot to be desired. Do you think he could you tell when Joss Whedon was at the helm and when Zack Snyder was at the helm? You can, for me, it, the, it, yes, actually, I think I could. The scene where, the slow motion scene of Aquaman walking out of the bar, loud metal music, he's chugging whiskey and walking toward the waves, that was very Zack Snyder. Uh-huh. It was super, super him. And then, like, the race scene at the end, you would say that's a Joss Whedon Pro- thing? Actually, yes. Yes, I think I would. I mean, like, I'll, I'll give them credit for, like, actually paying attention to be like, okay, what's the thing that people like about superhero movies? It was movies? a fanboy scene, without yeah. a doubt. Without a doubt. And so, so you're right. In that regard, they paid attention to what they thought, what would people want to see? What's something that we can throw in this scene here that's a real conveyor to, like, fans of a long time? Well, it's, it's funny, too, comparing both of these movies because they're both damage control because oh, yeah because like the first two thor movies are not good no like i i like the first thor movie but i like when thor's on earth and he doesn't know 
Earth. Yeah. And he's just a big, dumb idiot on Earth. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I really like that a lot when he's on Earth. But everything else is just so bad. <laughs> it's, um, and well, except Tom Hiddleston because Tom Hiddleston is a, is a he's cutie. Always, he's fun. I mean, like that's what that's what helped with the Avengers too. It, like it established an amazing villain. Mm -hmm. Um, and this movie was just like with both of these movies, they're trying to be like, okay, Thor is is an idiot, but we keep trying to make him too serious. And then the Justice League is like, here are these moody moody superheroes but like when you think about it like it's a man dressed as a bat i know and another man who came from space who lived in kansas there was a lot of i, I think maybe another reason i was disappointed is because there was so much opportunity for humor in there in the avengers and like iron man it's like joss whedon was so so good and effective at but they were they prepared the humor. for that though they, they, they were did. fucking ready for it they did justice league was like Let's do it. Let's, Not do, let's just get exactly. it. Get it done. We need, to, do we it. need to get our movie out there because the competitors, the competition is already the a lot far ahead of us. Think about that, dude. The competition, like the first Avengers movie came out what? Like 2012. Oh my God. I believe. It's been five 2000, years. 2008 is when Iron Man came out. Uh, so it's almost 10 years almost since 10 the launch years. of like Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. We're, I was in high school when that came out. Jesus Christ. I remember seeing the first Iron Man movie and just like shitting my pants. Oh, I was, was like, great. that was so was fucking great. cool. John Favreau, Tony Stark. And mean, at the end of it with fucking Samuel Jackson just being like, how about let's talk about that, those Avengers? That first, oh, that first crossover scene, the tease of the whole, of the universe as a whole. Yeah. And it's, it's cool. Cause I will say it, that itself, that sort of change. I think it's already changed the way that we watch movies because how many people now stick around past the credits? You, the, movie, That's all. Like movie I'm afraid used to, to leave out. movies now. Everybody like is. every movie, I'm and afraid to leave, yeah, or else I'm gonna miss something because of what Marvel and now DC and then because of what these hero movies have done. That you know that there is a little nugget connecting to a different movie or teasing you about the universe that's coming after the credits so you don't want to leave for fear of missing that yeah. thing and now as you said all other movies do that too even not these hero movies so it's like it's a thing that has really had i think lasting effects outside of even just those movies themselves all right so now now that we've watched I think we've seen pretty much every... Well, you haven't seen Wonder Woman, but I think we've I seen... I haven't seen the Guardians movies either. Ah. Uh, so I've kind of... I was going to say, like, because there's there's been a lot of superhero movies that came out this year. Because we had Logan, we had Guardians, we have Wonder Woman, we have Justice League, and we have Thor. That's five fucking superhero movies. And I, I feel and terrible. And from three different fucking things, and I can easily say, of all of them, Logan is so... Good. I still haven't seen that either. You're a fool. I know. I know. You're I a am. great big dumb fool. I want to see it. I just. I'd haven't. say I think Logan might be my favorite movie this year. I, I really want to. Everybody says it's so good, and I just haven't. I, because, I haven't like, gotten it, it. The the magic of like Logan is that it throws the superhero tropes on its head because it's not a fucking superhero. It's a goodbye movie. movie. It's Bon Voyage to Patrick it's, Stewart. It's as, not. As, a, it's as not as only Charles that. It's a and... fucking western. Ooh. And that's what makes it so good. Wasting. Because it's not it's not being like the oh we have to save the day and save the world. Right. It's a personal story. Which is there nice. is, there is no end game of like, oh, we're gonna save the world, we're gonna prevent all this terrible stuff. It's like, no. Everyone is really selfish in this and in, for different reasons. Well, it just brings the consequences and, the and the world closer in yeah you, you think about avengers and, and justice league it's, it's always about saving the world or saving the it's got to be the greater good yeah everybody's saving the entire population of the entire universe what it sounds like from you is that logan is a story that's focused centered on like a few a few characters it's got just three logan, main right? characters and those are the ones you stay with the entire movie right so it's it's, it's a it's nice great. it's a nice change of pace to be able to sort of focus a little a little more narrowly on uh, on the spectrum of I characters. Just, I, That's I cool. I really like what Fox is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Fox is changing it up. Because, like, as much as I love Thor, it's just another superhero movie. Because, like we said earlier, like, the garbage stuff is great. And I wish they stuck with the garbage shit. Yeah. Like, where it, they're just on the planet doing this Coliseum. 
and then eventually doing like the Colosseum Revolution. Well, I'll tell make you, it make it gladiator, yes. but weird space shit. It should have absolutely been that, especially in favor of all the bedroom Hulk talking scenes with Thor and whoever. As funny as those were, those were they those lasted were like, so long. Those were like not even that funny. Like I mean, they were good, but Hulk talking always puts me off. <laughs> always. It arms. You know what I mean? Like just oh, Hulk like raging fire. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Hulk like raging fire. Yeah. You puny. You know what I mean? Like, See, like that. Uh, they had to make Hulk talk at some point. I know. And leave it to Taika Waititi to like actually have the balls to be like, let's just make him fucking talk already. Ugh. I guess. I because I, I mean because so, he's a the, big enough character it, that it, that's that's something too because we've gotten Bruce Banner as the character. Mark Ruffalo has solidified. Bruce Banner. He's the the best Bruce Banner. Definitely. We don't have a Hulk. We just have CGI monster that screams at the and end grunts. At, at, and screams yeah. and grunts at and the end smashes. of the movie. Yeah. Um but then this time around he's got a character. We understand what he wants. He's like I fucking hate Earth. Right. Everyone there hates me. I'm awesome here. Right. I've been it's relatable. Good, yeah. All of a sudden you can you you understand him. You understand yeah. his motivation. And and that that motivation is like, okay, yeah, I like that he talks and he's a character now. Yeah, right. Uh but at the same time, yeah, there are times where I was like, Can we get out of Shut the bedroom? Yeah. Can we please leave the bedroom? Yeah. I want more of that Coliseum fight. Because that yeah. Coliseum fight is easily the best fight scene in the movie. Da- with, undoubtedly. Even though it's a, a little bit of a CGI fuck fest. Yeah. But it 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 works yeah like it works because like thor going through like character progression kind of shit and just the idea of thor fighting the hulk without his hammer is just fucking cool yes like i i loved all the premises of this movie but then they had to go back to asgard and and get rid of all the fun weird stuff to just be a superhero movie again right right and it's disappointing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, exactly, exactly. So in short, Thor is fun. Justice League, not so much. Yeah, Thor um, is a movie that you're that you should turn your brain off because it's not it's not going to be like, oh, we're going to do something so deep with yeah, the characters. Yeah, no, it's no Chris Nolan movie. It's yeah, no Dark and, Knight, and it's or... not and it's not doing the Guardians of the Galaxy thing where it's like, oh, it's comedy, but also we're doing deep character stuff in between every joke. Right, right, right. And that can be a little bit too much. Just swinging back and forth, between swinging the two. back it's and exhausting. forth between comedy and drama. It can, it's it can like be exhausting. Stop. Well, if you're not, it's it, pacing is huge, and so if you're doing it too much, it's it, it is exhausting. Yeah. But. Whereas whereas Thor was a full blown comedy. Yeah, yeah, which was nice. Yeah. Um, last thing, I guess I'll, one thing I wanted to talk about with you, Greg, is there was a, an anime that I caught on Netflix, uh-huh. which just really kind of blew me away. I had really no expectations of this. And then it, I, I kept seeing it pop up like as a suggestion in my feed and, and all this. So I, I, uh, I, I fired it up and it's, it's called, um, oh boy, I'm, I'm kind of blanking. Out. Oh, Apocrypha. It was, uh, Apocrypha. Like, I think Fear colon Apocrypha or Apocrypha colon Holy Grail War or something like that. I have never heard of this. From what what my friends who have seen the others told me, this is basically a spinoff. Think Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. You know how there's Full Metal Alchemist and then they made Brotherhood and it's like the same story but sort of branched in two different directions? That's how this Apocrypha Holy Grail War, excuse me, has been described to me is that basically there are th- two or three other seasons of it and they're a little different. And then this one that's on Netflix now, it's a Netflix original that I just watched. Uh-huh. It's kind of like a spin off and they're taking it in a different direction, but it's the same universe and the same background as those other stories. So it's like the brotherhood of this Apocrypha series. Interesting. And all right, so let me just try and. Sell me on sum, it. Sum up what it's about. Sell me on it. Basically, they're in this world where over the over the course of history, these Holy Grail wars pop up. And what they are are the Holy Grail is a device which grants grants wishes. 
So whoever wins, Ooh, so kinda, it's like it's, like it's the Dragon Balls. Ca- Dragon Balls. It's you. You think Holy Grail. You hear Holy Grail, and you think the Fountain of Youth. But the in this world, the Holy Grail will grant you anything you want. Whoever wins the war gets their wish granted, and then everybody goes back to sleep, and then they wake up three hundred years later, and there's another war. The people who fight in this war are broken up into two classes. There's masters, or, or there's there's summoners and then there are servants okay and the servants are like these heroes from history joan of arc is one of them shakespeare is one of them gilgamesh and uh, think of all oh, these these heroes I've heard, i in remember mythologies. this now achilles i've heard about Chiron, this yeah, yeah, the yeah. Trainer. there's all the from all these different genres of mythology these different cultures these heroes the american from, gods the anime yes kind of in a way which really turned me on to it is it once uh, in the in the first episode you 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 meet some of these servants who are summoned to fight yeah and it's just it's really cool there was this siegfried he's like a dutch dragon slaying knight who i had never yeah heard of. i think he's from very like norse cool. mythology i believe yeah yeah very very cool so yeah. like so that concept is what kind of hooked me is the idea that you're summoning these servants and and they're connected to these summoners. And basically they have these a, a finite amount of command spells. So for the most part, the servant is fighting and their motivation is to win and get their wish granted. But their wants don't always sync up with the summoners who have brought them. So yeah. the summoners have like a finite number of command spells. So if your servant isn't listening to you at one moment or you're at a crucial juncture of, hey, kill this guy or don't, they can issue the command spell and force their servant to do something. Oh. So there, there's that. So it's like Zatch Bell. What's that? Oh, oh, I was I was just memeing with you, but if if you don't know what Zatch Bell is, then I don't. You are so you are, I'm you are none depth. the wiser. I'm out of my depth. You are you are fine. All right, like cool. don't never never worry about it ever again. Okay, okay, cool. That speaks for the audience too. If you ever heard of Zatch Bell, don't don't don't, don't hear of it. Turn don't. away. It's bad. Okay, it's cool. Real bad. It was I'll real dumb. That. I don't remember that. Um, about, let me tell you about Zatch Bell. No, <laughs> no more. Uh. So, so that and and the, the the way that the conflict goes, and just with with all the people, it's like some other stuff happens. There, are, there are other the servants are broken up into different classes too. Like there are masters, there are, um, I think they call it like swordsmen. There are like they call them something. It's like a, a rapier or like a, they have some name for them. But then there's archers, there's mages. There's so it's like the servants are, are brought back with certain roles. They have too. they have classes. Yes, exactly. So they're they're in those things. The fights are really cool. Then the third type of people that are caught up in this thing are like they call them homunculi, and they're like these drones. They're bred in a laboratory. They're grown in these tubes for months, and then they are expelled, and they have like a shelf life of like 72 hours or something. And Dang. all they are are like energy farms for like fighters. They go out, they fight, they expel all their magical energy, and they have a 72-hour life, and then they just drop down and die in the battlefield. One of the hooks of this series is that a homunculi somehow wakes up in his tube and breaks out of the thing. And at first, he's completely helpless. He's like a baby. So one of the heroes finds him on the floor of the lab, takes care of him, protects him for a few days. And then basically, little slight spoiler, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, around episode three or four of this Netflix season, this homunculi gets like stabbed in the forest. And that Dutch or Norse dragon slang hero I mentioned a few minutes ago he sacrifices himself. He he rips his own heart out of his body and puts it into the homunculi who was dying on the forest floor. And then the homunculi changes. Now, all of a sudden, he's not bound by the 72-hour lifespan of the laboratory. He has a hero's heart, and he has abilities and, like, other shit. So that's... But he doesn't have a master. He's free. Exactly. Exactly. And he, and he has the choice of whether he wants to fight or not. And, he, and he, he becomes friends with these other heroes and characters. And so there's a couple of different elements of this story and the plot that really hooked me into it. Mm-hmm. And I would highly recommend it to anybody who is into anime, who's into mythology, who's into like 
battle royale style of fighting where you have, you know, not just like two people or two sides conflicting. You've got yeah. a lot of different characters that you're interested in and have their own motivations. It's cool. Interesting. It's fun. That sounds, you know, that sounds pretty cool. And the fights were great. Nice. Also, also a big win. Yeah, like, I don't think I've, like, ever since My Hero Academia, I don't think I've really watched a new anime that, like, wowed me with its action scenes. But fuck, man. I get on love, it. I, get on I it. love, and it's a I love quick me some watch. good anime. It's, it's a quick watch. You, okay. you, it's, it's easy to burn through. Once you, once like, you know, you know how they all are with, with context and exposition. Mm -hmm. The first episode or two can be a little bit. It's wordy. You, you're, like, it's, it's wordy and you're just, you're not familiar with the world and the rules and everything. So it can lose you and you're a little bit wondering, all right, when's this going to pick up? Yeah. But in like I'm just three, looking for another like full metal, like. Full Metal just, like, sucked me into, like, its entire I know. world. me too. Like, it took a while to understand how the world works, but it, it, it introduces, like, the world itself pretty well. Like, yeah. within the first, like, 10, 15 episodes, you're like, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get what this place is. Mm -hmm. I love it. Fun. I love it. Fun. It's fun and stuff. sad. Yeah. It's real sad. And then all of a sudden it makes everyone give those big dumb anime faces. Big and dumb! Big dumb. Um, but yeah, uh, what else What else did I do? What did you do? Well, oh yeah, remember uh, Remember those white supremacist guys that kidnapped me? Yes. Uh, they came back. I do. They came back. What? Because uh, they, they made a promise. They were like, hey, if, you, if your mind isn't changed, we're coming back. And they certainly did. They threw me into the van. The, the uh, first time they threw you in the van, you played Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, the first one, the right? first one, yes. and then this time they strapped me down and made me play the second one. Oh, okay. And uh, wow, what an interesting band of terrorists! I know, just like they were, they were like, they, we want you to see like the horrors of like what people think of our belief. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So uh, I played Wolfenstein two for the PlayStation Four, and. Uh, uh, there's, I, I have to compare it to the first game, and uh -huh. I have to compare it to Doom, because I love Doom. Uh -huh. uh, the second game is so much better story-wise and character-wise and cinematography-wise and graphic-wise. Okay. It looks great. Like, the presentation is a step above. The story is super good. Uh, it's really well-established with the serious stuff, but it also takes the piss out of, like, Nazis. So it's oh, it can be it can be really funny, uh, really sad and really dramatic at the same time, and it never feels like it's taking away from one or another, because like yeah you'll laugh at the Nazis, but there are other times where you're like holy shit these guys are ugh, right not this to be trifled with yeah, yeah. This, this isn't a world to be trifled with because there's there's a great moment in the game where um, you have to go to Roswell New Mexico to uh, hide a nuke in an underground facility uh and you go through like 1960s america as it's been taken over by the nazi regime and it's so fascinating mm. like um there are there are openly kkk members like walking down the street and you can follow them and listen to a conversation they have with like a nazi soldier and it's so detailed, and it feels so real. Really pulls you in. Like, it's funny, but at the same time, I'm like, this is horrifying. Ha haunting. This is haunting that yeah. this could exist. That's, that's, it sounds very well done. On it's their part, so I guess, well yeah. done in that way. The biggest disappointment with this game, though, is it's fucking short. Oh, okay, so it left you wanting more. Yeah, so um, I think the first game ended the perfect way because it had a really good final boss, and the ending was like, okay, this is a satisfying ending. You you beat the general, the main general who caused you like to be in your coma from the first game. Uh, you got You finally got your revenge for all your friends who died because of him. Um... And it was a really satisfying boss fight. The second game, you're going after the secondary antagonist from the first game. She's become she's taken over his position. Sure. And it's like it's really disappointing with her with like taking her down because it's not a boss fight. It's a cutscene. Oh, um, the oh, final okay. boss of the game. The so final you're not boss really of, involved at all. No. Well, you you press the attack button when you walk up to her, but. Okay. 
and, but, but that's that, that a, just launches the cutscene. Yeah, it launches it. it launches the cutscene, and I'm like, this is so disappointing that the game ends like this. Uh-huh. Um, and, and and it leaves on a massive cliffhanger where it's like, okay, we do want a sequel after this. Whereas the first game said there could be a sequel. But the story is so satisfying on its own that it could end. Um, the other thing too is like the first game is just way more memorable. Like I know, like I know, I described the Roswell scene, and that's incredible. Like the entirety of Roswell was super well done. But that was kind of like a lone high point in terms of what you remember. Pretty much, like that up to when uh, there's there's also like a chapter right after it. That's super, super fucking good. Like, it ends the halfway point of the game. It's like right when you hit 50% of the game. Um, That's really fucking good. But then um, after that, it tries to one-up the first game, and it doesn't really do a good job of it. So, like, in the first game, you go to the moon. There's a Nazi base on the moon. Wow. And that's just... It's so memorable. Yeah. Because it's it's so ridiculous. Because they're all talking about... All right, where where are these Nazis hanging out? And because BJ's been in a in a fucking coma for fifteen years, he's like, I don't understand what the Nazis have been doing. And they're like, dude, there's a fucking moon base. Like they they built a moon base. Jeez. And you go to the moon base and you fuck it up, and it's really really memorable. They try to one up it and saying, oh, Hitler lives on Venus. Mm. And I'm like, okay, this is exactly the same as the same, as the moon. Same gag. Yeah, uh, there it's, there is a, a great scene like that starts the Venus mission. That's super great, um, but then the rest of Venus, like the the whole level, I'm like, this is just the moon, but less memorable. Um, mm. So the first game had better and more memorable levels because, like, the first game, like, there's you you put yourself into a prison to break out this like. Um, this Jewish ancient, like Jewish civilization, like scientist cult, uh-huh. uh, that built like amazing technology that Nazis stole. <laughs> okay. It's it like that, that level of campiness is beautiful about yeah. him. I love it. Yeah. Um, and you have to break him out of jail. So you have to like fuck around with shit. You have to fuck around with like the prism system and whatever to actually get out. And then, uh, you you hijack a massive robot and you blow up the facility in a big robot. Fun. There's never a moment too much like that. They try they try to recreate moments like that, but it just feels underwhelming. Um, and again, it's so short, and there's a lot of cutscenes. Yeah. I mean, yes, the story is great, the characters are great, but when you're playing a fucking first person shooter. I, I want there to be gameplay. Right. It's cool that you can play the original Doom. They or, or not Doom, uh Wolfenstein. You can actually go to a machine in oh, your hub in inside, your hub world inside and, the and game. it has all of Wolfenstein. It's wow. the entire game. Like so you can play Wolfenstein one as the character in Wolfenstein two. So you're playing a game you within are, a game. You are you are playing the original id software MS DOS fucking old as shit Wolfenstein. Oh, not the one that you No, 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 not like the n- not the new right, one that right. Bethesda and the, Machine Games took the over. The original. The original. That's that is And interesting. and I was like this is great and all. But I want more of like this world. Mm-hmm. Because the first game already did something like that. So in the first game uh when you go to your hub world if BJ sleeps in his um, his mattress, he can go to the very first level of Wolfenstein, but he himself, like when you're playing it, it still acts as the, the third person shooter in a modern shooter, like first person shooter game. But all the assets around you are Wolfenstein, the original game. So it looks like you're in that but you control and run around like you're like you would normally. And it's a really fun level cuz you get like all these nice perks after you beat it and it's oh, tough. Nice. Yeah. Um but then in this game they just they just put in Wolfenstein, the original Weird. game. Weird. I'm like this is cool and all but I want I want more of the actual game. Yeah. And that's that's a massive disappointment. It's good. Um I say it's actually worth playing. 
but Doom's better. <laughs> okay, that's fair. And, of, then you, I, and then obviously you escaped from these this band of terrorists. Yeah, because because they were like, all right, do you do you feel bad? And I was like, no, you just you infer you further like solidified me in my beliefs because right. like you saw that Roswell shit. That's horrible, man. Right. And they they beat me on the head with the PlayStation, and kicked me out of the bit. Ba- oh, the band. jeez. Yeah, it sucks. I could have eaten that PlayStation, but yeah, sucks. Yeah. Well, what are you? But, I, do? but uh, thankfully, I mean, they kicked me out, and that's where I found the chicken car. Well, you know, that's fortuitous, and, yeah. and also, I mean, and I got to play Wolfenstein. So, and, and besides, you know what else? I mean. That Nazi party is going to come around again pretty soon. We're going to jump on that bus and we'll have fun and we'll forget all about the, uh, you know, your little, your little run in with these white supremacists. These guys are like, they're the small timers. Yeah. They're like wannabe gamers. They're grabbing you in a van and making you play like Wolfenstein. The Nazi party, like officially the Nazi party bus, like the party bus. Yeah. That is, that's a lot of fun. That's the real deal. Okay. And I can't wait on, I can't wait to jump All right. on that thing. You I know, mean, I think we're, I think we're up. close to it soon. I think it might, yeah. I think it's coming yeah. through Chicago soon. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I just, I, I love it. You know, you start to hear that techno in the distance and then you, the bus rolls up. It's just, Hey, how about you come up here? You can be white or you can be white only, but let us all party together. Oh, we're having fun now. The bus is not going so fast, but we will, yeah oh you're dancing so close to me now yeah you're so beautiful with your blonde hair and blue eyes oh my god it's going too fast now yes so yeah and then the man whoops out his his sousaphone and goes into a solo no sousaphone it's like dr seuss's instrument right yeah it's the big one yeah i knew it it's the tuba that wraps around your waist tuba that wraps around your boobas yeah yeah which is weird weird yeah. stuff well uh i think that um it's been a th- it's been a thoughtful night, Don. It has we been talked a about superheroes, night. anime, and shooting Nazis. Yes, that's that's, that's a four way win. Totally, and I I'm I'm glad when I came in here and you were coughing up feathers after having <coughs> eaten them. L- less less came out just then than has all <coughs> the There we go. There's some. But Waka! I know you're gonna stop doing that at some point. I hope. Uh, there's cream corn in the back. You're gonna be fine here for a little while. I'm uh, I'm definitely going back to that uh, dumpster uh, behind the bar tomorrow because right around brunch, man. I'm telling you, people get rid of that stuff. Yeah, man. I might join you. Know, you. I mean, I could go for Come a good by. waffle in the morning. Come by. Come by anytime, man. I'll I'll, I'll save you. Let's make a seat. game out of it. Let's just open our mouths underneath the window and hopefully we get some waffles. Burp. Blurp. Make like little video, old video game noises. Yeah, like old Atari over. stuff. Yes, yeah, I think that'd be fun. And, like uh, Colonel Custard, you know the guy who would, who would shoot his semen down from from the roof of a building. Colonel Custard in the living room, with the rubber glove. With the rubber. With the rubber. Mm-hmm. Yes, just like that. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, this would be Don and Greg signing off. Don and Greg, thank you again for joining us. We'll be back next week, talk about some more content. And until then, have a lovely day. And we hope that you can find your own boxcar to just escape from the world in. Because that's what we really like about meeting each other here. Mm-hmm. All right, buddy. Now jump, jump into uh, into the sidecar here, buddy. Okay. Take us for a ride. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to the chicken man. Okay. Come on. God, that is sick.